so this is our, our final session in this lovely, lovely time we've spent together. Um, and we're going to talk about the topic of abundance and giving with reference to, I mean, the Sid quote that you shared, we really need to have it in front of us, don't we? Because I've referred to it so often <laughs> since we first spoke, but um, certainly the word abundance is in that, is in that quote. Um, but I'd love to know what, what you meant by it. Like, what, what does it mean to you, abundance and giving? Well, you're going back to the quote. I mean, Sid talked about giving without fear or need of return, just giving and trusting uh, it in the abundance behind life. And, and really, again, as we talked about last time, it, we're having a conversation about what is the nature of mind. And my sense from my experience of life is that it's, it's infinite, it's complete, it, it's everything. It's that there's, there's nothing that love can't overcome. And I think of love as at the source, uh, at the source, it is the source of, of, of life. Uh, so it just makes sense to me that we're meant to be throughputs for that. We're meant to just let it flow through us and that we're given everything we need and, and that we can give whatever we see to give and there will always be more coming behind it. You know, there's this, um, there's this, this little saying or aphorism that people talk about all the time. Oh, when one door closes, another one opens. Well, where does that come from? It, you know, it really comes from a simply kind of our observance of even the natural world that there's a, there's a fall and then there's a winter and then there's a spring. There's a flower that blooms and it dies and then there's another flower that blooms. You know, we, we know that the universe is continuous and it's evolving and it's always producing beautiful things, uh, e even after the worst of circumstances. I think that's one of the greatest lessons of my life was well, certainly the death of my first husband. We talked a little bit about that, that I couldn't have imagined a more awful, terrible, horrible thing to happen. And yet it was real clear to me within hours that life went on and that beautiful things, were, that I was still seeing beauty, that, that I was still growing, that I was being given what I needed to go through that experience one little piece of information, one, one little thought at a time. And the beauty that has come out of that for me spiritually, and certainly even in terms of the, the family that's grown up out of that, the, the new husband, the new, new children, new grandchildren, new life, uh, made all the richer by what I experienced with my first husband and, and the awareness that, that, loss is survivable and that love endures beyond death that there's nothing can, that can ever take away love that it's it's an infinite supply i feel more full of love for my late husband than i did the day he died i mean carry him in my heart yeah. it's it's just eternal and it's so big it has just kept growing the more i look back on that time the more i appreciate it yeah. So it, it just it just appears to me that there is no limit to the source behind behind life. None. Yeah. It's it's unlimited. And so if if it's unlimited, if I give away some manifestation of love, you know, whether that's the energy of money, the energy of service, the energy of of you know taking care of the energy of sure. loving a pet or yeah. building a practice, whatever, building a business. If I give away, then it just makes sense to me that there's going to be more to replace that. Yeah. It, it'll just keep coming. The supply is, is infinite. And that's just been my experience that the supply is infinite. 
I've gone through periods in my life because I can imagine, you know, people listening and saying, well, I've been through periods in my life where there wasn't an abundance. And, and I've been through those periods, you know, after my first husband died, uh, I went through a really, really rough financial period. I, I remember sitting in a Walmart parking lot with a couple dollars in my pocket, thinking about what I could buy that would feed myself and my daughter in as healthy a way as I could until my next paycheck came. And going in the store and sort of calculating, you know, what did I have money for? I mean, it got really rough and really tough for a while. Now, I, I think that one of the things I think one of the things that was happening at that point was that I, you know, this was before I knew the principles. I was in really, really deep grief. Mm -hmm. And it's very possible that there was intuitive information coming through that I just wasn't sensing that might have made that whole period a lot easier. There's, there are awarenesses that I have now that I think of that if I'd had them back when that happened, I would have moved through that a lot more gently. But I was also learning as part of what I was going through how abundant the universe was and how much support and guidance there was behind life. It was going through that that really taught me That's it. a lot we, about that. We have, we have um, stories and judgment about experience that, that, this, that this isn't giving, this isn't abundance, and this isn't love. And we're always wrong. It's just like thought, judging and experience and saying this, this shouldn't be happening in this way. This does not feel like, and in that thought of like, this shouldn't happen this way, the feeling is of not abundance, right? The feeling of, is of constriction and limitation. And I don't know, there's the, the phrase that came to mind when you were speaking is like, it's all love in disguise. And so even in those moments where it's like, well, I live in circumstances where there isn't an abundance and, and people are taking from me, not giving, constantly taking. It's, it, it, it is love in disguise. And, and actually, it, usually with hindsight, you can kind of see how it was a gift to us and not in the middle of it. Right, so I totally understand if there's someone who's listening and in the middle of it right now saying, well, this does not feel like it and never will. It's like, as we look back on past experiences in our lives that we judged and suffered and felt constricted and limited, we've all had those. As we sit now, we can see we kind of look back with love and see and, and appreciate that particular time period in our life even though we know we suffered, we can see how it was still love in disguise. It was just a really bloody good disguise. <laughs> you know, it's like thought limited, thought created a story around it, but, but, but for thought, no story, just love. But thought, one of the things that we can, that happens in thought is, is it, it limits and it constricts and it can, and we, we feel that limitation and constriction and we can have the thought, this isn't love and totally believe it. Yeah. Do that all the time, but it's not true. Right. You know, no. And as you were talking, uh, I remembered year, years ago, way pre-principles for me, way pre-principles. I read a book, um, I think it was by Melody Beatty. She was a pretty well-known writer in an area er, era when the when the therapeutic community was talking a lot about codependency, right? And and she had been uh, she had been addicted. Either she was she was in a relationship with someone who was addicted, or she herself was addicted. I can't remember. But she there was a book that she wrote. I don't remember much about it, even the title. But the one thing that stuck with me was that after whatever period of treatment or or difficulty disruption that she had gone through, she found herself in a really um, meager, simple apartment. It was all she could afford for a home. And I believe she had a child. And I remember kind of her talking about going into this apartment and seeing, you know, the broken sashes and the shades and 
things being all disrupted and holes in the wall and, and like, you know, kind of really having this sinking feeling of, oh my God, this is how far my life has been brought down. And there just was a beautiful description about how she was, she was kind of upset and crying and, and, and heard something from within her that said, it's okay, you can create beauty even from this. And she was really struck by that. That gives me goosebumps. And, and so she, there was a beautiful, uh, she kind of kind of joked as I recall that she, you know, this was this was not that far from the so-called hippie era era. She loved hand-me-downs and she didn't mind tie-dyed things. And so she just made it her mission to go to thrift shops and and she created a beautiful space. And and it was simple. It wasn't, you know, certainly wasn't, wouldn't have won a design contest in Home Beautiful, but it was hers and she loved it. And, and she talked about how she was so grateful for it, that every day she would look around and she was so grateful that she was past the, the addiction, that she was living on her own, that she was providing for her daughter, that she was, she was in this beautiful, safe apartment, that she had created this oasis of prettiness and beauty for herself. And, and, then, and then it was really interesting. She talked about how things just started shifting and it wasn't very long before she got offered an option to go to a much nicer place. And she was actually a little bit like, oh, I don't know that I wanna leave this place. I've invested a lot of energy into it and I've really come to love it. Well, I heard that. I heard what she said that the answer was to be quiet, to look for beauty and to be grateful. And, and to just give to, you know, and even, even that was a form of giving, giving of herself in making this beautiful space, giving of her time and attention to creating something that was orderly and that was pretty and that felt nurturing to her. That was giving. And, and she just gave herself over to that and beautiful things happen. And that's just proven itself over and over in my life that it's even like with this knee thing, you know, you brought something up in the last session that I, I, I suppose I could be in a lot of thought about, oh my gosh, what did the first surgeon do that I had three years where I couldn't walk and I couldn't bike ride anymore and I couldn't swim. But I, I have none of that. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had was gratitude that, yes, I didn't get the results I hoped for, but that what I called, because after I, I, had, I had had a bike accident, a very bad bike wreck that really destroyed my knee. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had was gratitude that what I called the broken wing syndrome was gone. Because before the surgery, the knee replacement, I literally had to think to keep my knee from flying out from under me. I had to, with right. every step, I had to remember how to keep that joint in line. And that was gone, that was gone. And, and I, you know, I was really grateful that I got that. Yeah, I didn't get exactly what I hoped for, but I got, I got something that was really beautiful. Yeah. I got freedom. And, you know, and gradually over time, I was guided to something that now looks like it will it will take me further. That's a beautiful thing. And that's proven itself over and over and over in my life that the, and in the lives of the people I work with, that, that gratitude and faith that, that that potential behind life, that thing we call God or spirit or mind or whatever we call life, whatever we call it, it's infinite. There's nothing it can't dissolve. Yeah, what, what you're making me think of is just the, that, that's, what was the quote? What was the words you said? That even from this, you can create beauty, something like that. And, and I was just thinking, yeah, that's, that's always possible because this, the life force, the nature of mind is, is that it's a creative force. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, it can create just like what looks like destructive things as well, but it's, it's what creates everything of beauty. 
And, and so no matter where you are, what your circumstances, where, like no matter what your circumstances, there is, an, there is a beautiful feeling. And in a beautiful feeling, it looks like you see beautiful things, no matter where you are. Like I've heard stories of that from, you know, people in prison. Yeah. And an, an oh, experience, yeah. Of, you know, an experience of beauty. And, and there's never, there is never a circumstance or a time or an event where that's not available. It's in my, I, in my, we might be totally blind to it a lot of the time, but it's to know that that's, the nature of life is that there is always beauty to be found. And then as we see beauty, we feel gratitude for that beauty. And in that feeling of gratitude, we have insights, we hear our intuition, we're in a quieter mind, and we don't need any of it because we're already in gratitude. We're not seeking anymore. We're in a feeling of gratitude in a quiet mind. And through that space, more comes and we don't even need it. It's like that's abundance is more than you need, right? That's the definition yeah. of abundance, right? There's more than you need. And in the space of no need, more comes. And that's just true, it seems to me. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I know in, in, the, in the outer world, in spiritual communities, there's, I, I feel very certain that there might be some who would listen to this conversation and say things like, oh, they're talking about spiritual bypass. Yeah. You know, they're not talking about grappling with the very real suffering in the world. But I, you know, I, I think that it's, it's possible to do both, to, to acknowledge the reality of the hardness of life and acknowledge the reality of the suffering in life to acknowledge the reality of our own suffering. I have no problem telling you that right now, I'm not terribly comfortable. Yeah. My knee hurts. <laughs> it's really sore. And every once in a while it's stinging me. But, and I can acknowledge that and say, yeah, yeah that's going on right now. And I'll do what I need to do to take care of it. But I, I would much rather invest my energy, my awareness, my consciousness on the fact that I'm healing. Yeah. That this pain is limiting me right now, but it's my body's way of saying, go slow. And that's one thing I don't know how to do very well. Yeah. So I think it's possible to do both, to acknowledge the suffering in the world, to acknowledge our own suffering, to, to not be disturbed by you know, the emotional experiences that we have. And, and to keep ourselves, our attention, our awareness, our consciousness fixed on. I think, to, I think if it's possible for Viktor Frankl. Yeah. Find yeah. Oh my God. And not yeah. deny suffering. In, yeah. in, in those most extreme circumstances, I always go to the extremes, but I think if it's possible there to find beauty and that's not spiritual bypassing to my mind. Like if it's possible there, then there can never be a circumstance where it isn't, it isn't possible. And what you say, it's just like, you'd rather spend your time looking towards, I mean, who wouldn't rather spend their time looking towards beauty rather than the suffering. And it's always there to be found, always. Yeah, there's a there's a passage where um, Sidney Banks, who, who I think of as a mystic and a great spiritual teacher, says, you know, with regard to the suffering in the world, we're none of us any more important than a single grain of sand on the desert. That's not very important. Yeah. But then, but then he goes on to say that if you fix if you I don't remember the word that's not the right word if you attend to what is in yourself and open to what is in yourself release the love that is within yourself 
uh, you you will have changed the world. Yeah. Well, then then you're everything. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. I know I wanted to. I was trying really hard to let you to to do a short session with you so <laughs> that you could have some respite from your knee, but. <laughs> And there was too much beauty being created to pay attention to that suffering old knee. So yeah, so and isn't, it, isn't it so and true? It's so funny that as we've been talking about all of this, I haven't even thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way of it, isn't it? That's it. I mean, we could have spent half an hour talking about the pain in your knee, or we could spend half the hour, half an hour, like just in awe at the beauty, the abundance, and the love in life, right? Like I know how I'd rather spend half an hour. <laughs> Yeah, well, and but but isn't it isn't it so interesting that 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 just completely blotted out the awareness of that, you know? Yeah. To be, to be in this beautiful space and conversation with you in the now. Yeah. And just yeah. dancing with what came. That's really incredible. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. I've loved creating these videos with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope it's to hang delight. out with you again soon. Yeah. Thanks, Linda. All right. Thank you.